Hi everyone, today I've got a real treasure on my bench for repair. This motherboard is as gaming as it gets. Just look at how many DR mouse stages it has. I really like the design of Asus boards. The big heatsinks, the RGB lightning, it all looks amazing. At first glance, this board seems almost unused. It even still has the protective stickers on it, which are usually removed once the board is installed. The only note says no post screen. That's all we know, so let's check it out and see what's wrong with it. At first, I thought the CPU socket might have bent pins. This is kind of usual for such shiny boards, but after taking a closer look, I saw the socket was perfectly fine. I measured the resistances on the power input lines and coils. All readings were in kilo ohms range, which means there is no obvious short. So the board can be powered on, and let's see what happens. So I measured the resistances and everything looks fine. Let's power it on, check the current consumption and see if it will react to the power button. So I will take the camera here. You can see the consumption. I will power it on. And we have 129, 130 milliamps, which is good. This is normal. Let's press the power button, pressing. And we have a reaction. Here we go. We just have 280 milliamps. And that's it. It definitely means we need to remove heat sinks and investigate further. I want to note here, a motherboard always goes through a specific power-up sequence, supplying power to each part of the circuit step by step. The powered circuitry then provides the so-called power good signal to the next stage. If the previous stage doesn't provide a power good signal, the entire power-up sequence halts. In our case, since no debug LEDs light up and the board draws a steady 280 milliamps, it's clear the motherboard never completes a startup sequence. This means we need to trace the faulty stage by measuring voltage at each step of the sequence one by one. So, here I found the problem. Um, I don't have a voltage over here. This is a uh, CPU voltage, uh, 1.05 volts. And so this voltage is made from 5 USB within this small chip. So let's look at the microscope. And as you see, so this is the coil. This coil uh, doesn't have any voltage. And this is a small chip which should make this 1.05 volts. And what I found is here I have two missed elements, one and two. So those are the resistors according to the board view. After soldering those resistors, I decided to check the nearby area under the microscope once more, since spotting an octave component can be difficult. Unsurprisingly, I found another missing resistor and chose to solder it as well.
what can I say? No surprises. I have soldered two resistors. The top one, this one, is a 100 kilo ohm resistor, which carries the power good signal from the buck converter that provides 1.05 volts to the CPU. And the lower one is only 10 ohm resistor. The third resistor, which is right here, is forward this same power good signal into the 1.8 volts power unit. This rail is a critical one and it usually powers the chipset and also serves as the source for several other lower voltage rails. So it's obvious without this power good signal, the 1.8 volt rail wouldn't be generated and the entire power up sequence would be halted. So now that this is fixed, let's power on the board and see if we're lucky. I will plug in the button. Well, I'm using a, a small standalone power button that connects directly to the motherboard. Normally the power button is part of the computer case. Um, during installation, when the motherboard is mounted into the case, you connect the cape, cases cables, including the power button and front panel LEDs to the same motherboard header. Okay, I haven't powered on yet. Let's do it together. At this stage, anything can happen. So, pressing the power button. Okay. Pressing the power button on the motherboard. I guess I need to place this heatsink here, just for in case. Looks promising. And here you can see a pause screen if it happened. Okay, nice. Looks like we're booting. And yes, we have a pause screen. Those moments always bring such a sense of relief. Okay, wow. Okay, we'll pour it down. Well, of course, the motherboard will go through stress testing to make sure all ports are functional and the system is stable. But reaching this point means the hardest part of the repair is already done. The repair was successful in large part because I had access to the board view. With it, I could see the exact resistor values, identify signal names and verify missing components. This was critical for tracking down the fault. What puzzling is how those components were knocked off in the first place. They were located in two different areas of the board. Um, and yet the PCB itself showed no scratches or other signs of damage. Things you typically expect if someone slipped with a screwdriver or caused mechanical damage while mounting the board in a case. So let's assemble it. It is also worth mentioning that even if a motherboard passes stress testing, I always take time to inspect for missing surface mount capacitors. Those don't usually stop a board from functioning, but they play an important role in stability by filtering the power rails. As a general rule, a missing capacitor is usually not a big problem. It may slightly affect stability, but the board can often function without it. In contrast, a shorted capacitor is a serious issue, as it can bring down the entire power rail. A missing resistor is also critical since it breaks the circuit and prevents signals from our power from reaching where they are needed. After stress testing and final checks, this motherboard should be ready for a second life. That's it for today's repair. If you enjoyed this journey, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe for more motherboard fixes. Another dead board brought back to life. Thanks for watching. See ya!